one, two. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're back now. Um, yeah, we're going to do this panel myself chatting to the wonderful Kiki Lomo from the No Shade Collective, all about how to build and grow and develop a DJ collective. So it's going to be, yeah, really interesting, really exciting. So, uh, yeah, make some noise for Kiki Lomo joining me on stage. Do we have a mic as well? Thank you. Another mic? Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so today uh, I'm really excited to be chatting to you. Um, yeah, we're going to be exploring how to build and run a DJ collective. Um, so can we start? Can you set the scene and introduce us to No Shade? Um, so No Shade um, is a Berlin-based collective um, that is uh, not only a collective, but a DJ training program and a um, club night series based in Berlin um, for women, trans and non-binary DJs. Um, and the aim of it is to help um, typically marginalized communities to um, get a foot into the door in the music industry because um, we, the way the program works is that we have an application um, round and then we select two DJs to train with um, normally basic or no experience in DJing. And we train them on club standard equipment, so typical Pioneer CDJs, um, mentor them for a, a month connect them with um, local Berlin DJs, pretty good ones, to mentor them through the training series. And then we throw a club night series at the end of the training program um, to uh, allow them to showcase their new talent and they're um, also playing alongside international headliners. So, yeah. Wow, and how did you all come together then? Because aren't there, aren't there like, quite a few of you, like 16 or so? Exactly, so. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of people for a, a collective. It's a lot of people, it's a lot of people. <laughs> so, the um, collective um, was originally started by, or the idea came from um, one of our co-founders, Linnea Palmerstahl. Um, and there's this uh, group called Sister, where a lot of, um, is another network for women and non-binary DJs and people working in the music industry, um, journalism and stuff like that. Um, and she pulled together a few of her friends um, to form this idea. And we, uh, f we were previously funded by Music Board Berlin. Um, and essentially, as each application round has gone through, I'm one of the second generation additions to the, to the collective as one of the trainees. Um, we add more and more people to the collective. We realized there was a point where it was getting a little bit too, too big, like 16 people, it gets hard to make decisions. So we, at the last training round, we kind of did a cutoff and now um, we have like no shade graduates. So people who've been like uh, trained by us and we've seen uh, a lot of success in a lot of the people who, a lot of people's careers who have been trained by us. So it's, it's been really exciting so far. And for you as a DJ then, wh why did you come to no shade in the first place? Um, so I actually wasn't a DJ. Um, I actually became a DJ by accident. <laughs> um, my um, first passion was actually radio. Um, and I, moving to Berlin, I felt I wanted to grow my radio experience, but I was noticing that radio in the UK, as you can tell by my accent, that's where I'm from, um, is very different from radio in like in the kind of more underground scene. Um, and there was a need to, I felt there was a need to know how to DJ on club standard equipment. Um, and obviously there's this, uh, uh, disputable um, uh, notion that you're less professional if you're DJing on a controller, which I think is, um, I don't know, a bit elitist in my opinion, but that can come later. Um, but um, I felt there was a need to put, to, in order to progress, to be taken seriously, I needed to play on CDJs. Yeah. Um, but that is super hard to find access to, particularly um, for people um, in limited financial situations. Um, and then I came across this program on a Facebook post. I applied and I got in and then, yeah, the rest is history. Nice, it does seem that collectives are a great place to, yeah, to be able to grow, like whether that's having the facilities of having CDJs or having people you can ask questions to. So I guess is, is the aim basically to, to, for No Shade to have been a space where women and trans and non-binary people can I guess, reach out and actually pursue DJing? Yeah, for sure. It's supposed to provide a network, essentially, um, provide one-on-one -on -one mentoring as well, because sometimes there's a lot of DJ um, training programs that have larger, um, larger rounds of programs, which can be not as focused. Um, and it's really su supposed to really equip them and provide a springboard for their music careers in, in DJing as well. Cool. 
Um, yeah, there are a lot of people in No Shade, and it seems you're not all just DJs. There seems to be people with loads of different skills. Like even your website, I think I read, was has been designed by the, the, the collective, which is cool. So I guess when you're in a collective, are you always looking for people with different skills? And, and is there an example you could give of when you all banded together and brought your different experiences to the team? Um, so actually, the way that um, our skill sets kind of came about. It just kind of happened naturally, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of us have um, daytime or full-time jobs working in the music industry in places like Beatport and Native Instruments. Um, and a lot of us have experience in terms of, um, for, for example, putting together a brand and a, a logo and um, clothing and design because we have a, a merchandise series as well. Um, so I guess um, the way that everyone came together, we we saw kind of a natural, naturally people's strengths and weaknesses would come out and then we would try and align based on what those strengths and weaknesses and interests were as well. Um, and I guess in a lot of our projects in terms of our party series and we're currently um, curating an evening at this um, event space um, in, in Berlin called CO Berlin, which is um, quite a big, a big deal because um, we're doing it alongside um, other collectives like uh, and labels like Mod Selector and stuff like that. Um, and there we kind of divide and conquer, essentially. So people with different skills and different um, experiences will tackle different things. And yeah, it just involves a lot of communication. <laughs> yeah, how do you guys communicate? Do you have a WhatsApp group? How, what's, how's it work? We have been through everything. <laughs> There's been a Facebook group. There was Facebook Messenger. Now we're currently on Slack. Um, very what's efficient. Slack? It's like a mess. I have it a lot in work. It's like a messaging service, essentially. Um, but you have different channels channels and threads in order to keep track of what's going very on. Very official. Very official wow. indeed. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, we use Slack in terms of communication, but it is still a struggle sometimes just to make sure that everyone's uh, voices are heard. But right now I think Slack's, Slack's the best way. Okay, Slack, I will <laughs> check it out. Um, what are some other advantages to being in a collective? I guess if, if, if you compare it to being a solo DJ, like what, what are the upsides? Um, so I would say uh, some of the benefits I've experienced being part of No Shade is again this network, this um, this network of people through everyone's um, experiences that you can draw upon, people's expertise, people's um, insights and um, advice has been extremely useful. Um, and in terms of an, like an outside perception, there's um, obviously this notion that um, you're stronger in numbers, right? So in terms of our mission having something that bounds a whole bunch of people together and having like a collective mission that um, is only helped by having a collective essentially. So I feel like the, the notion and the, um, the identity that we all share means that our message is translated in a much stronger way. Um, and essentially people know when, when you come to this, okay, no shade, it's, it's, it, uh, people can be really clear on what we're about and what we represent. How often are you guys all in the same room? I don't know if we've actually all been in the same room at once. Okay. There's always one person that, and especially because, um, I don't know if you know how Berlin is, but I feel like Berlin is probably one of the few cities where people actually, it's very unusual for people to work full time. <laughs> so a lot of people um, have um, a freelance or have um, um, ventures, but then some people do have full time jobs. So finding a time and a day where all 16 of us are free, um, is um, difficult sometimes, but I believe actually next week will be one of the first times we'll all be together in the same room. Um, okay. So yeah. So have you have you met everyone in yeah, the collective? Yeah, yeah, for okay. sure, for sure. Like we have been, we we have meetings and obviously through communication online, where everyone knows each other, and it's just always a case of there's always one person who isn't able to come and stuff like that. And um, but yeah, we all know each other. We all have met each other. It's just a case of. How do we get each other all in one room? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that must be a bit of a, a challenge. Are there any other challenges that you might face being or running a, a DJ collective? 
Uh, yeah, for sure. We come across it every day. Um, because we're quite relatively new to this, um, there's always a balance. Um, for example, we have uh, a flat hierarchy. So even though we've had founders, generally we operate with everyone's voices are equal. But obviously that can be quite difficult sometimes given the number of people that we have. So communication is everything. Just trying to make sure that points are being translated across. And um, it's it's sometimes hard to really make sure that everyone's opinions are felt. So for example, um, we recently got an offer to work with quite a big, a big brand, um, but quite a controversial one. Um, and there was a huge discussion within the collective about whether we should take the job um, because we weren't sure whether they aligned with our values, but obviously the paycheck was pretty nice. <laughs> um, so I think in that, um, the that there's a, we had a really intense discussion. Um, we tried to make sure that everyone had the opportunity to voice their opinion. Um, but it can be difficult sometimes making sure that things translate in a, in a, the way you want them to come across, particularly with online as well. If you're if you're typing things, sometimes um, things can come across in maybe a less than savory way. Um, but we're working on it. <laughs> and who has the final decision? There is no real way. We're still um, we're still working on if we want that. So right now, there's a lot of polls, a lot of voting. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. And I think, obviously, there's times when people will have different experiences um, that will may mean that their voices weigh more than others. Um, but again, it's just about communication. Like, if people have um, a strong opinion and they really feel that um, something should be done, then they're given the opportunity to voice it. And um, if not everyone can agree, then we try and come up with some compromise. But I think that, and sometimes we ask for advice from other collectives that we are um, familiar with from around the world. Um, and uh, we try to come to some um, conclusion, but yeah, it's sometimes difficult. <laughs> yeah, that's completely fair. <clears throat> um, at this point, does anyone have any questions they wanna throw at the moment or we'll keep going? Any questions? Okay. Oh, there's a question over there. Yes, hello. Is there a mic? Oh, there's a, there's a microphone there, hang on, okay. sorry. So are all the, all the people in the collective are DJs or is there kind of one person that might have found it that could manage it, coordinate it, or how would you see that working? Or do all have to be DJs in order to make the collective work? Um, we aren't all DJs, we actually have one VJ, um, someone who takes care of our visuals. Um, but the rest of us do play and we, um, and distribute gigs around, and we have, I believe, five co-founders. Um, but in terms of how we run, everyone chips in, whether it be replying to emails, working on social media, um, production of merchandise, um, forming our visual identity, everyone kind of chips in. Um, and yeah, I think we're looking at starting a, maybe a more formal organization. In Germany, it's called a Verein, where it's like a non, not-for-profit, um, <laughs> sorry? Okay, cool. Yeah, so we want to. We were thinking of starting a Verein, um, and in that case, we were looking at maybe um, having some form of board. But um, right now, yeah, we're all kind of on one level and making sure that um, everyone's voices are heard equally. And you think that that's important that everyone is, I guess, from the business or does and play music, or could you see like a coordinator type person or somebody who basically holds it all together, who's not necessarily. So we did actually have that at one point when we were f funded by Music Board Berlin. We were in partnership with uh, a community space called Akud Machnoi. Um, and uh, one of the project managers there was one of our main coordinators. Um, but as we've evolved, we've decided that we could take on some of the roles ourselves and kind of distribute and split the load of the work. And obviously there's ups and downs in people's capacities, but um, again, it's just a case of communicating, saying, hey guys, I can't take this on right now. Is anyone else free to take up the reins? And it seems to be all right so far. Um, we, we have considered maybe having like designated people within the collective being um, project managers or responders to emails and stuff like that. But um, yeah, where right now I think it's I think it's okay. It's not too bad. Any more questions at this point in time? No. Cool. I'll ask my questions. Um, so 
it seems really interesting that you guys represent a wide range of genres and um, cultures as well. Obviously, you're based in Berlin, and I believe I've read that you kind of one of the reasons was to be sort of an alternative nightclubbing, um, push forward an alternative nightclub scene. Do you think a collective's like a, a good way to do that? For sure, for sure. I think um, obviously with the collective, you're reaching a larger number of people just from all the, if you're multiplying all the people that we know. Um, and I think as with any brand or person or identity, when you um, are a collective, it means something to some people. Um, and based on the foundations of what we do, um, of you know making sure that marginalized communities have an opportunity to excel their careers in music, um, there's come a set of expectations from our club night series. So we try to provide um, a safe space for everyone to fully express themselves. Um, and to be honest, by the um, just by the nature of the people that follow us and that um, are interested in the music that we put on and the people types of people that we engage with, our parties are always really really good vibes. Like, um, and we've started to through our collective identity, we have built a network of um, other creatives, be it musicians or DJs or artists outside of Europe, um, not just in Germany, um, and. I think that, again, it comes through the strength of our collective identity. Do you guys have a music policy? Again, with that many people, surely you don't all play the same thing, or can you go into detail about what you play and maybe that might differ to someone else in the collective? So when we go through the applications, we try to um, stay a little bit away from house and techno, controversial, um, but we feel that um, given the nature of Berlin, which is quite a heavily house and techno um, city, it's nice to give people an opportunity to develop um, the other sounds. But other than that, there's no real there's no real limitation in the types of music that people can play. So, for example, I play everything from grime, two step, garage to hip hop by Le Funk. We've got a whole bunch of people from Brazil, um, from um, Turkey that play um, a wide range of music. Um, normally it's quite high energy, um, but then we also um, experiment a little bit with more ambient sets, um, more experimental things. Um, we're now taking on um, courses with Ableton to potentially look at how we can um, build in music production as well, and um, you, the you applications for live sets. So. Yeah, there's no, no restrictions or limitations other than preferably not house or techno, but I mean, I, I still play that too. <laughs> so a whole mishmash, I guess. Exactly. And I, I'm curious about your parties then. What, what none of us, I'm guessing, in, in this room have been to. Have you been, anyone been to a no shade party? Okay. You should definitely come. Set the scene, sell it to us. What will we, we expect? Um, so we typically um, are very creative, very DIY with at least the visuals and the interior. Because um, I don't know if um, people have seen our logo, but it's a very uh, retro pair of big eyes that are our logo. So normally we have those plastered around everywhere. Um, we have uh, we try to have an awareness team around our club nights to make sure that if anything goes down or if anyone feels uncomfortable, there's always someone to um, look after them to give give them a good um, support system. Uh, we're very big on quality of music because I think um, sometimes, particularly when it comes to the promotion of um, uh, minority DJs, so uh, women, trans, non-binary, a lot of people, and there's a notion sometimes in the industry that it's just for image and it's not for skill. Um, so we're very big on only bringing in DJs that we have that we believe match up to our standards. So you can expect good music, 100%. Um, we try to make sure that we throw our parties with good sound systems, so the quality of the sound is good. Um, and I think it is just a free atmosphere, to be honest with you. I think everyone um, feels has a freedom to express themselves in a good way, um, to play what they want. There's no limitations. Um, we try to always bring in DJs from around the world um, and also celebrate local Berlin DJs as well, give people opportunities. Um, and yeah, um, I guess our visuals as well. Our um, VJ, um, Juju or Julia, she always goes, goes in. Uh, one of our last parties, which we did in um, Gdansk in Poland, she took 3D scans of us and projected them and it, it was crazy. It was really cool. <laughs> how, how do you even do that? That is crazy. That, it's amazing what, amazing what tech can do these yeah. days. There's apps for it. 
So that is a huge upside to being a collective, having a 3D version of yourself. Exactly. That is sick. Um, how has being a part of No Shade benefited you as a DJ? Has it opened any doors? A hundred percent. I think um, particularly when it comes to opportunities, a lot of people look to No Shade as um, a reference point and because of what we represent and what we can do and also the caliber of the DJs that we um, that we kind of rear up. And I think I have definitely been able to form a really strong network of not only DJs and mentors, but friends as well. A lot of close friends have come out of that. And I think because, because of the nature of how No Shade was formed, where there was an in initial founders and then an application process, although maybe some of us didn't know each other before, the one thing that brought us all together was our love of music and the love and the want to advance ourselves, to learn, to grow. Um, and the passion for playing. So I think um, that network and that um, support system has been invaluable. Um, I've learned a lot, uh, and it's, I'm really like proud to represent what, um, we, what we do. I've just got a couple more. Um, I think No Shade does wonders in terms of represent representation of not just range of music, different types of people in electronic music. So in terms of gender, ethnicity, sexuality, and I feel like that's sort of the great space where you can be political in a way and you're sort of driving forward a movement. And other collectives do this, like look at um, Room for Rebellion. I know you guys are fans of them. Um, they are an activist party collective who put on events um, sort of for legal abortion care across Ireland and Northern Ireland. And there seems to be, there's a lot of collectives sort of cropping up and doing parties like in a way with a mission like as you said to sort of represent different people and maybe give people an opportunity who in the past may not have felt it was their space to do so so I was wondering in reference to No Shade do you think collectives have the power to change or influence not just the clubbing world but also the political landscape? A hundred percent. I I mean, it was actually quite funny because we did a uh, feature with Boiler Room, um, and one of the we've done a couple of features, and there's always you no know, trolls in the comments and stuff like that. And one of the comments was like, "Why does dance always have to be political? Why can't we just um, why can't we just have fun?" Um, and I feel like the very nature, particularly in electronic music, electronic music is political. Like it was formed from um, oppressed minorities um, looking for a way to express themselves. Even just looking at the history of Berlin, it was seen as a celebration after a, um, it was used as a form of celebration after the fall of the wall in places like Brazil. The the um, the rise of baile funk came from again oppressed people in favelas, um, and it's seen as a way to express themselves. A dance or um, even voguing in ballroom in New York in the 1980s was again an ex an expression from of oppressed people. So I think electronic music in its very self is political. Um, I think. The strength of collective identity definitely can push forward agendas. Um, I think there's there's a 50-50 kind of thing. So um, definitely having collectives with a mission and pushing an agenda does make a difference and people take notice. Um, and um, we are able to kind of tie together the celebration of music, but also making sure that important issues are heard. But in terms of lasting impact in the industry, um, I think that's when the like industry officials, so whether it be radio stations, music labels, music tech companies, whatever, they're, they, they're the ones working hand in hand with collectives and these initiatives, um, that, that's where a lot of the lasting impact will happen. But for example, looking at collectives like Discoman in, in New York, um, through their um, work, that they've basically created jobs for a lot of women, trans and non-binary people um, in electronic music. So that's making a change. They're, they're pushing um, values and the value system. And I think even now I've seen um, events be boycotted in Berlin when the lineup isn't diverse. Um, and I think now with this change in mindset through um, some of the missions that these collectives are pushing, people are being held accountable. Um, obviously I think there's sometimes toxicity involved in that. There's been a large amount of discussion within um, our community around call-out culture and how that can be held, um, how um, dealt with in a more, um, in a better way. But generally speaking, I think the, even the change that we've seen already um, is, is a good one. A step in the right direction. Yeah, no, that's 
really positive and really well said. My final question really is, sounds like you guys are doing amazing things and like seeing results by, by existing and by giving these people this voice and this platform. What does the future hold for No Shade? Oh, there's a lot of things. So, I mean, I guess um, one of the things, uh, unfortunately, this year we didn't get funding from uh, Music Board. Um, it's, it's quite standard because we had funding for two years. They normally, after two years, give funding to other projects, which is um, pretty, pretty cool. Um, but we would like to, as I said, advance our knowledge um, in music production. So some of us have already started producing and made releases, um, but some of us have no experience with production, including myself. Um, so one of our goals is to all start to produce and potentially release a compilation EP. Um, we also want to put together a label, um, which we're in the works of doing now. Um, there's a whole bunch of events and series that we're throwing um, that we uh, want to use to really celebrate the DJs that we uh, um, that we really value in the community. But obviously, we want to make sure that we continue with how we started, which is training and providing opportunities for um, trans, femme, and non-binary DJs to really thrive. Um, so we're looking at alternative ways of funding in general, already doing um, pro bono training sessions and playing around in different venues, ho hosting free workshops. Um, and we want to continue to let that grow. Um, we were considering, uh, we're also partnering with this space in Berlin called The Trade Space, um, which is a community space, a new community space. And they set up a new radio station called CCTV Radio. And we wanted to use that platform um, to kind of hold Q&A sessions and really open, uh, or not even open, kick down some doors. So um, provide a space for people to ask questions. For example, how much should I get paid? Or how do I negotiate? Um, ask questions about uh, how to form uh, collective identities of their own. Um, I think one of the things that we also are open to is criticism and feedback um, because we are learning, we are growing, and I think that um, we want to make sure that our community feel comfortable with talking to us about things maybe that they don't agree with what we've done. So we think we can use um, the radio and the CCTV broadcasting platform to do that. Um, and yeah, I guess we also all want to grow our DJ careers, right? Um, so um, we're all just working together and making sure we get good opportunities, um, having training sessions, just jam back-to-back -back sessions, just to really exchange ideas and help each other grow. Um, so yeah, there's a lot, <laughs> a lot in the works, right? And now. have fun, right? Exactly, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, that's all my questions. Does anyone else in the crowd in the crowd have any burning questions about? Oh yes, over here. Hello. We've got, yeah, okay. Um, the application process is the longest drill for doing an application for that uh, look. Um, People. Uh, you create this beforehand, and or if you have the necessary clearances. Mm. So um, essentially, the application process is put online, just your standard Google, Google form. Um, and what we try to take into consideration, I think, pretty easily is people's interest in music. So we ask them why they want to be part of this program, what interest they have in DJing, and usually it's people who just um, have, a, have a passion, or for example, myself, I wanted to progress my radio career. Um, sometimes people have their own controllers, and they put together, for example, playlists on Spotify, or mixes using, um, using DJ apps um, that maybe aren't, um, at, they're more of a beginner level. Um, and we try and really sound out that enthusiasm, um, and we ask them to provide links to um, to their social media and any links to SoundClouds or Spotify um, playlists. Um, recently, more recently, we started to also do interviews, N not really interviews, more informal chats, just to get the gauge the vibe of the individual. And um, we really wanted to um, make sure that the people that we're selecting are in it for the love of music, as opposed to um, just. Oh, I want to DJ and it looks cool kind of thing. So people who also really want to contribute to the collective and what we do, and sometimes we ask them if they have any skills. For example, I don't know, they're good at writing or communicating, or they have a um, they have a background in web design because we have a, a website and that, that can contribute. But it's not necessarily um, uh, essential. It's just really about us really gauging the individuals. Um, interest and enthusiasm and love for music and seeing how that fits into our values. We literally have about a minute left. Is there any 
real quick question anyone wants to ask. Okay, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Round of applause for Kiki Lomo from No Shades. Thank you for having me. Thank you.